electric, quite large, and now also in a sporty version, this EV powerhouse by Volkswagen, the new ID7 GTX. Everything you need to know about this one with Thomas Nautigefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go here with the front. King's red is the color, reminding us of past GTI models. And then here you have the illuminated VW logo in the front goes through here this combination main headlamp unit and also the GTX gets this additional light here in the sides and also a sporty accentuation here in the lower part contrasting black with this open hole or open mesh design and the towards the side profile you get the larger wheels these ones here are 20 inch but you can also go for 21 inch wheels that will come later. GTX batch here at the side and four meters 96 is the length. This is actually the same length, so there are no other spoiler overhangs and so on. Also a nice black contrast here in the lower part. This being here the Tura version, the Estate or Combi as we say in Germany, the GTX will also be available for the sedan. So the ID7 platform is a rear wheel based platform, usually 286 horsepower. You only have electric motor at the rear axle. This actually remains the same here with the GTX, which is the all-wheel drive version. However, you Additionally, get also an electric motor in the front, then combine 340 horsepower in the Tura form. That is then the most powerful VW estate ever. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Still, the rear wheel motor is the stronger one, so it will also remain a rear wheel bias. And the front motor will also not run when you're just like, you know, more or less statically, when you're just like running the same speed and so on for efficiency reasons. Acceleration figure will be less than six seconds. This is actually quite quick considering, you know, not maybe if you compare performance competition models like, you know, like the Tesla performance models or something, especially, yeah. It's not the quickest one, but less than six seconds. If you think about pre-electric era, that was already quite quick. However, if you think about, wait a minute, weren't there quicker Volkswagen estates? Yes, you know, like a VW Golf R S8 or something. It's just so much less in weight that it can be quicker, of course. Top speed here for this one, 180 kilometers now or 112 miles per hour. Then the rear here, light signature all the way across. Pretty cool, isn't it? And GTX design here, once again, in this mesh scheme in the high gloss black. Yeah, I really found the illuminated Volkswagen logo pretty cool, isn't it? The IQ light, the matrix LED, comes standard here for the GTX in the front. And then also in the rear, you have the cascading turning indicators here in this three-dimensional style. I always love that feature. Turning indicators in the front here, very visible. I love that. And by the way, the suspension base setup would already be a little bit sportier. They have actually worked on the stabilizers. And optional DCC, the adaptive suspension dynamic chassis control, that is also set on a sportier trim and they also worked on the software tuning of that and so on. Oh, and by the way, what about the frunk? It's like the vehicle, it should have one, but you know, not always do they have one, but let's check it out right here. Yeah, maybe if you've seen earlier reviews, then you know the ID7 does not have a frunk. It also doesn't look like as some would fit. Then again, you have to say it has not a long hood, um, so it's rather short. Yeah, is it really important? Tell me in the comments. Battery size, it's like in the Pro S version, the bigger battery is 86 kilowatt hours net here for the GTX or for the all-wheel drive version. And that means when we calculate it among our experience, something between 400 and 500 kilometers of rear-wheel range, depending on weather and temperature conditions. Recharging 200 kilowatt DC max. I like that the charging port here opens you know, on the top because then it can come from here or here with the cable especially in the basement garage. And this DC peak of 200 kilowatt gives you then 10 to 80% state of charge in less than 30 minutes. When we have the chance to drive this one, we can maybe also do a charging test at some point if you would like to see that. And here as a sidekick, the ID7 GTX in glacier white. Yeah, maybe it has some kind of cream nuance to it. And the lower black contrasts are of course even more contrast-ish than when the vehicle color is brighter like this. Would you prefer this one or rather King's Red? Of course, other colors will be available. And if you look here in the side profile, this is here also occurred with the 20-inch wheels in black to have the even more sinister look 
And if you've seen our normal ID7 review, especially of the tool right here, this element is usually like a chrome or aluminum uh, look here. But in this case here with the GTX, it's all the way blacked out. So the black roof was already available before. Just the element below that, this one here, that is then also in this black look to give you that touch of more sportiness. Key fob in high gloss black. Subscribers know that's not my favorite. Then flush door handles, we can grab underneath, door closing sound. It's actually quite good, not the super best one, but not bad at all. Then inside of the doors, here with the red GTX stripe, structured and then soft touch on the top part, microfiber insert, and also felt at the inside of the door pockets. Then the GTX interior here also has more red contrast here, also red contrast on the yeah, the stitching on the inside, also animal-free sustainable material on the steering wheel and the seats. They start here as base, looking like that. Fabric on the inside, it's actually good, breathable in summertime. Red stitching, GTX batch here, some microfiber insets. Optional, you can also go more microfiber also on the inside part. That is then the optional Ergo Active seat. And both are actually very comfortable. Um, wow. Interesting, why has Michelle put some music on here, some rave? Nice, yeah, we, we gotta visit the next rave, Michelle, definitely. <laughs> so back to the vehicle. The bolsters here are quite good. They're soft enough, but still they hold you in place. Very comfortable seat indeed. Is the Ergo Active seat even more comfortable? Well, the base form is the same. It's more about the surface material. Both are excellent. It's more about if you prefer fabric or the microfiber. And with 189, six for two, Still a lot of headroom left. This, in this case, then without the panoramic roof, you can get one. Then with an electrochrome shade. Maybe Michelle, you put some from the from the other ID7 in the editing that we can see the electrochrome shade because that's also very interesting. Steering wheel up and down, in and out, smooth process. Interior cockpit overview. Today all the black styling for the ID7. There's also a brighter cockpit styling available if you're interested in that. Here the glove box is probably dampened, falls down smoothly like that. Also here then soft touch, softer also on the top part. Yeah, the buttons here on the steering wheel, they are hashtag capacitive BS. So sometimes you hit them accidentally. So you get some kind of feedback. Yeah, but it's also not the best one, honestly. Switching yes here, drive and reverse or P then here on the right side. And this is here the 15 inch infotainment system. The sliders here for the temperature unit, they are illuminated at night, so that's a helpful thing now to see. And I mean, these sliders are pretty much hated, but then again, yeah, I prefer physical knobs. However, in contrast to only switching here in the screen, it is helpful to have them that you don't have to do everything in the screen. Same here goes for the volume. Oh yeah, some more rave. <laughs> Look closely to the inside here, the air vents are moving. And this is because I moved them in the infotainment. Well, they saw that as Tesla and thought it's, it's a good idea, but I think it's rather over engineering both a Tesla or Mercedes or a Volkswagen, no matter what. What do you think? We have also ambient lighting right here. Now it's activated and it's a nice thing to test the reaction here from the vehicle when we also use the voice assistant. Hello, Ida. I love you. Oh, don't make me blush. Ooh, see here, got a little bit of red in the face then. <laughs> Instruments are indeed really tiny, but usually enough. A head-up display on the right side, where you have the speed. There could also be an arrow from the Apple CarPlay, Apple Maps, if that's running. Hmm, I wonder, this is, is this, this is the base design, it's not the GTX design. I wonder if the final vehicle we we'll also have the GTX design here in the visualization. What's very interesting here is for EV specifics. Here you can go to charging and then set your charging limit, but also optimize. And then here manually start the battery heating process. That's good to have. So not only when you pick a charging station, also when you just click it here that you can precondition your battery. When you, for example, precondition like here, and then use just Google Maps in the um, you know, infotainment system and so on. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, of course, always available here as standard. Then here, storage and so on. You have a nice matte finish here on this cover. I love that. Just here, this 
you know, soft rubber, this will look ugly quite quickly, so they need to change that, I think. Slide it open. Cup holders are also adaptive in the front. Inductive charging pad with cooling and two USB-C chargers. And then you have the nice split opening here with a lot of space underneath. You can also put this one here out if you like. Also fix already on the front seat or on the passenger seat. Not on the driver's seat, of course. <laughs> and then we have more Isofix here and the outsides of the rear seats. We also have the nice GTX fabric styling here with some microfiber inset. If you would go for the optional microfiber seat, this would also be all covered in microfiber. And there's a lot of space here. When I'm driving as a tall person, so much legroom left, so good use of the package and headroom here. It's also fine. Actually, if you go for the panoramic glass roof, that even gives you a little bit more headroom, but yeah, it doesn't really matter as for the headroom. We have a lot of headroom in both cases, actually. You can slide down this here. These couplers are not adaptive, but you can activate them. There we go, here the ski hatch from here. And there's also this, you know, for the Tura, this is now Tura specific. Here, when you fold down the seats from here, then you can activate this cargo position and then fold it up again. And then they stay a little bit more upright like this you can see you know but usually it's of course more relaxed to uh, sit like this the cargo position just gives you a little bit more luggage volume then so the id7 gtx available as sedan or as the estate here the new tura is a little bit newer that version and here the width a meter of 40 inches this top cover here you press it once or press it twice the luggage also fits in here the vertical way it's 605 liters overall that's 70 liters more than the sedan or 35 liters more than the i5 touring <laughs> my bmw just yeah just as an info length here one meters and five or 42 inches that's actually quite cool and underneath here there's this first step you can also put down this or put put away this whole thing then here space for charging cable underneath. There would be the subwoofer if you have a version with the subwoofer. And of course, most important here to fold the seats from here. Easy release. That's a good and easy and flawless solution, actually. Here's the release for the towing hook. So I wait a couple of seconds, otherwise I would break Michelle's knee. <laughs> so there we go. It's half automatic. You have to pull the rest down there and the rear wheel drive models have 1.2 tons of towing capacity this one here being the all-wheel drive model will be at 1.4 tons so that's a little bit more so like a little advantage what about the child safety test here for the electric hatch oh that's a good sensor like that so if you wonder what about the northern american market so there are two main differences first of all northern american market only gets the sedan not to the estate not the tura in the front however they're more or less the same especially the base version and at this moment we expect the northern american market will not get the gtx batching so that kind of sub brand does not exist there however you will still get the all-wheel drive model Expected to have the same horsepower and acceleration specs and most probably also the very same design in the front. Of course, we will keep you updated with that as soon as we know. If you watch this video here at a later stage, just visit the, for example, the US configurator or Canadian configurator of the ID7. Then you can check it out and I hope I will be right. <laughs> If you're interested in the ID7 Tourer, but the GTX is maybe too expensive for you, we also have the normal Tourer review for you. Or if you want to see me driving the ID7, the sedan, check it out right here.